Well, <laughs> yeah, do it. Do welcome, welcome. Don't judge, just love. I'm trying to, I'm pretending to be Chase today. You always do the intro, and I actually feel really awkward and uncomfortable doing it right now. <laughs> I don't even. I think you I did a great job. I don't even know what I'm saying. You did so, a great job. Take it away, Chase. No, this is the Don't Judge, Just Love podcast, where we it, talk about all the is things. It? Is that what this is? With no judgment. Only love. That's right. We're, we're idiots. Okay. I liked Shannon's intro. Did you guys? That was fun. All right. Um, okay. This is part three of a little three segment uh, series, if you will, that we are doing on travel. And you may or may not find all of these episodes really boring. We don't know. We're <laughs> we're testing the waters here. So give us your feedback. But this is part three. Um, Chase and I recently, if you missed the previous two episodes, Chase and I recently took a trip to Europe. Um, We've been there several times, but this was the first time we'd been there in a while. It'd been like four four years, I think, since we'd been back. Um, And we love to travel. We love Europe. That's always where we go when we take international trips. Um, But obviously, now that our familial situation, so such a weird way to say that. Familial is such a weird word. <laughs> our um, family is our, our, our thing. That that's it. There you go. Um, we get asked, understandably. So, what do you do with the kids when you go on these long trips? Because, which fair question, because when you go on an international trip, um, it does kind of feel like, all right, if I'm going to go all the way over there to really make it worth it, you got to stay for at least, I mean, at least a week. And more like 10 to 14 days, I think, is how yeah. most people feel. It's, that's kind of how we feel. Um, but real talk, like, it's hard to be away from your kids for that long. For sure. You know, um, whether they're uh, medically complex or typically developing, either way, I just think it, it's a long it's time. It's hard to be away from your kids. It's a long time for sure. And um, so, yeah, so we get that question. We thought we would talk just a little bit about how we make that work with our family. Um and on this, we can just focus on this trip specifically because it's the most recent. Um, but why don't why don't you why don't you talk now, Chase? Why don't <laughs> <laughs> let me pass it to you? Um, why don't you do the substantive part of? The <laughs> no, you're doing great <laughs> on the podcast. Um, so for this specific trip, uh, we um, I think it was we wanted to accomplish two things with. Jack and who was watching Jack. So um, Jack uh, wanted to visit his Nana, which is my mom. And um, the other thing is he has... Who lives in Utah, by the way. We live in Boise, Idaho. She lives in Utah. And um, they'd been talking, you know, about hanging out for a week or two. And he wants to to be like a Nana week um, where he gets to kind of hang out with Nana and do anything and everything he wants with Nana. Well, and he was pretty adamant about like... With no parents. Yes, that part. It was like he wanted this to be a special trip that felt different than like, because we visit Chase's mom in Utah like. Multiple times a year. Fairly often, yeah, because it's, it's a pretty quick trip for us. Um, he wanted this to feel different than, than that. And so it was very much like, I want to go there without my parents. I want to stay for longer than we usually stay. I want two weeks with just my Nana. And for more context, um, we used to live, when we lived in California, we lived about five minutes away from Chase's parents. And so super, super close to them. And Jack, uh, in particular, super, super close to them. Um, he was the first grandchild in the family, and they just got really close. So he misses her. He misses Chase's mom a lot. Anyway, all of that to say, that's what he wanted. And we felt like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to try that out. Yeah. While we're on this trip. So that's what that's what we did with Jack. Jack we, went, him we flew with him down to Utah yeah. and dropped him off before we flew to Switzerland. Yeah. And that was another like fortunate, you know, kind of um, way that things played out is that our layover from, we flew from Boise and our layover happened to be in Salt Lake, um, which allowed us, and it was long enough that it allowed us to Drop off Jack. Fly with Jack from Boise to Salt Lake, pass him off to Chase's mom, and then continue on to our final destination. And then By the way, my mom 
sent or Nana sent tons of pictures of them yeah, she was the doing best. things. Oh I think gosh. he had like the best time. He lived like an entire like, like three entire summers, summer. like yeah. three summers in in, in that week two weeks. Yeah. It was like every day they were like summering hard, like <laughs> super hard. Oh, God bless your mom. Went fishing, Jeez. went to the they zoo. They went fishing, they went hiking, they went to the zoo, bowling. they went to the museum, they went bowling, they went to this like rec center thing, they had barbecues. Like a, probably like they, a trampoline park. He got together with all of his cousins, they went swimming, did we talk, did we say that? I mean, they went on like a train thing. They like, went on hikes. Yeah, they just did everything. So. He went to choir with my mom as well. <laughs> yeah. He led the music at choir. Which everyone just, wants to do during the summer. Totally. So anyway, so that was great. And honestly, it did appease our, you know, parent guilt a little bit. Um, it helped to feel like, okay, he's having a blast. He's not even, I, I really don't think he missed us until the very end. Mm-hmm. Um, Chase's mom did say that toward the end, she could tell like, okay, he was missing mom and dad. Two weeks was maybe like a little long, but um, for the most part, he was good. It was like an 80s or 90s movie when he saw (laughs) Shannon and I running, (laughs) running the airport. Ran to us in the airport, jumped into my arms. Yeah. Oh, cutie. Obsessed with him. Um, So that's Jack. So that was Jack. Ava and Charlie. So Ava and Charlie, we have a unicorn nanny that we've talked about, our nanny Sid. Um, We left the girls here at our home in Boise with Sid, our nanny. And... And it was great because that was another scenario where um, we have definitely left all three of the kids with just Sid before when we've gone on trips. Um, But given how long this trip was, it felt a lot better to only leave her with two two instead of all three. Um, So that worked out really well, actually. And yeah, she stayed here with the girls. She knows... and. I feel like that was also really nice because they were in, the girls were in their, you know, typical environment that they are comfortable with, where all of the things that they need are um, really easily available. Yeah. They didn't, you know, they were able to go to all of their appointments and their, you know, standard things, their therapy and all of that. And it, I, it just worked out really great. Yeah. And we actually felt really fortunate because, um, knock on wood, but, I feel like a lot of times when Chase and I go out of town, I don't know what this is, but like it's something, goes something wrong. will happen where the girls either have to go to urgent care or emergency room. Yeah. You know, and like, again, knock on wood, it's always like semi lightweight things, but, but, but it's still something, you know, mm-hmm. where Sid's stressed, you know, we're on the phone back and forth trying to figure it out. And we end up just feeling like, Oh my gosh, like, we need to be there. Like, this is this is terrible that we're not there. Um, and so we almost went on this trip, like, fully prepared for that to be the case. Um, and then it, it didn't. And it's one of the few trips where that didn't happen, which is ironic because it was also one of our longest trips ever yeah. that we've been on. So, yeah. So that worked really well. Yeah. And, and what's – so um, – Growing up, my parents, I felt like they demonstrated a great example of going on trips once a year. Um, so they would, would. Yeah, they would just go on a trip with themselves, uh, just the two so of them, two or of them. with, or maybe with another couple or something like that, or my aunt and uncle. And they would go somewhere for a week or two weeks, I think was the longest they were ever gone. But um, we would stay with family or, um, yeah, most of the time, yeah, I think almost all the time we'd stay with family or friends or some sort of babysitter or something, but, um, almost all the time. Like, are you saying that sometimes you didn't stay with anyone? No, no. (laughs) I'm (laughs) trying to think through all the people that we stayed with when we were really small. I think we did have like most of the time it was family that was watching us, but there was like one or two times where we had like a, you know, babysitter that we knew. One or two times where we watched ourselves. It was (laughs) fine. (laughs) We were like, Five and six. Our parents were really <laughs> no. They, they really were, prepared. They were us super well. responsible, but um, <laughs> but it was such a great example to me of making time, you as, know, yeah, for them and for their relationship. And um, <clears throat> I always I always remember that and admired that. And so 
I have tried to emulate that in our relationship. You missed a big four-year chunk there, buddy. <laughs> During COVID. COVID, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was COVID. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. And I was going to say, when I mentioned like our our parent guilt was appeased a little bit, my thought right after I said that was like, but wait, I don't think, I don't, I want to like teach myself to, to get out of that mindset of like needing to feel guilt, like to your point, um, I don't, I don't want to feel guilty that we take time and because it, because it is really important. It's really important to have that time with just your spouse or your partner and to reconnect. And obviously, again, there are a lot of variables that make that really difficult or sometimes make that impossible, but I feel like prioritizing it and, um, just seeing the value in it and making it happen, it, it's important for sure. And for sure. And whether the trip is international or close by, I think it's just important. It doesn't even, even the length of the trip, um, I think it's important to prioritize that in a relationship. For sure. We used to be better about that. We used to always go on, <laughs> on, <laughs> we used to go on a date every single week, and we were good we're about it. We're getting back on track. We're and getting back on track. then COVID really messed that up, and we honestly... We have just barely started to like, okay, we got to get back to our dates once a month. I also do want to say, and again, I don't want any, I don't want to sound obtuse in anything that we're sharing in these episodes, because what I was going to say is, uh, excuse me, for medically complex, for parents of medically complex kids, maybe especially, I think there can be a feeling of um, like that guilt of leaving the kids to go do something as a couple, maybe there's a propensity for that to be even more intense um, just because there are additional needs and additional concerns and, um, you know, chances that things could happen anyway. Um, and I know a lot of medical parents who they don't feel like they are able to do that and able to get away. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure the point that I'm trying to make because again, it's like, I get it that it's not always possible and that there are, especially when you have a medically complex child, um, there's more to coordinate and to, you know, it's not just like the person watching them has to be able to handle their situation and all of the things that they need. Um, so there's a definitely an added layer of complexity there, but maybe what I'm speaking to is the guilt part. I think those parents in that camp, in the camp that we're in, um, as medically complex parents of medically complex kiddos, perhaps even more so need to like push that feeling of guilt away Mm -hmm. and, and recognize like, no, that like, we need that, you know? Like you need that opportunity to go and recharge and just be something different or be something additional than just a medical parent. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I really struggled to get that out. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was worth really, the wait. Really struggled. And I again, I hope that is um, received in the way that I mean it. I don't mean to be obtuse, but I, yeah, I just think I just think it's important. And I think um, it's easy to feel that guilt, but that doesn't mean you should feel it. I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Because now I'm rambling. Okay. What else? Anything (laughs) else? Anything else, Chase? (laughs) No, it's good. As always, y'all, we promised this would be short and sweet, so we're going to wrap it up. But as always, if you have any additional comments, questions, anything related to this episode, you can find us on our social platforms. I'm Shannon Willardson on Instagram. We're the Willards family on YouTube. Shannon Willardson on TikTok. Um, the family made YouTube channel is where our podcasts um, air, the mm-hmm. video versions, um, or our YouTube channel. And uh, Spotify. Yeah. And of course, you can listen. Apple. Anywhere, where, anywhere you listen to your podcast. I cannot talk. Talking is hard. Okay. <laughs> we'll, well, thank you so we'll much for joining that. us on another episode of the Don't Judge Us Just Love podcast. You're struggling too. I'm struggling too. It's okay. We'll struggle together. It's okay. We will talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good one.